Hello, and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we're going to conclude our uh, lessons on differential equations and learn how to plot some simple differential equations. Uh, in specific, we're going to use the calculator to plot what we call a slope field. Basically, you can think of a slope field as a solution space that's plotted that sort of lets you visualize what, what lots of different solutions might look at look like all at the same time. It's a little hard to visualize without actually showing you, so we'll just dive right into it. Uh, the first thing to know is that you can only plot first order differential equation slope fields on this calculator. You just can't plot anything higher than that. Uh, first thing you need to do is go to the mode menu. You're currently in function mode, so fly this guy out. We've done all of these already. We've, we've explored everything. Let's go down and select differential equations because we want to plot a differential equation. All right, next, before we go any farther, uh, let's go into y equals, green button, y equals. Notice that this page looks a little bit different now. It doesn't just say y1, y2, y3. It's got some other stuff here. We'll come back to that in a minute. First, go to F1, Tools menu. Go up one to the Format button. This lets you basically uh, select some things about the graph. You can turn your axes on and off, grid on and off, things like that. Make sure under Fields it says Slope Field. And make sure under solution method it says RK. This stands for Runge Kutta. It's a, a different way of calculating the solutions. It's just I just wanted to show you this. Uh, if you fiddle around with it, you can come back and put it in these positions. It's the best way to go ahead and operate the calculator. All right, now you get to enter your differential equation. Notice what we have is at the top there's T, T, T0. The, there's no subscripts in this calculator, so you can kind of think of this as T0 is equal to 0. I'll come back to why it's important in just a minute. Uh, here is the line that we enter our differential equation on, uh, y1 prime. The reason there's a 1 there is because you can enter more than one differential equation, so this is the first one that you can enter. Now you can only plot one at a time, keep that in mind, but you can have more than one of these things typed in. This next line, yi1, is uh, for something else that we'll get to in a minute. Basically, if you're going to specify an initial condition, then you need to put some information here and also here. And I'll explain that when we get there. But right now, we're not going to do any initial conditions. We're just going to plot the slope field of the general solution. There is a huge gotcha that you have to understand when you're dealing with this uh, mode of the calculator. In fact, there's quite a few gotchas. Um, when you're entering these things here, if you refer to y1, uh, or, or I should say, if you're going to type in y prime, like we've been typing in y prime all the time, you have to reference it as y1 prime because that's what it is. It's the first equation. So when you're, if you want to type in y prime, uh, you, you can't just type it like this. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. You can't just type it in like this. You have to type it in like y1 prime. Otherwise, it won't know what the heck you're talking about. Uh, and the second thing is that when you're typing these guys in, this is a function of time. It's, in, it's assuming that y is a function of time. Up until now in my solutions of differential equations, we were using y of x. y is dependent variable, x is independent. That works out fine when we're solving these things by hand. When you plot them, it's going to assume that y is a function of time. So you can't type x's in here. You've got to type t's in here for time. Uh, so if you need to type a t in, make sure you type, type a t for time in there. So let's go ahead and type something in here and see what we get. So we have y prime, basically. Let's type something simple in here. Let's do y1 uh, minus t squared. All right, so this is our differential equation. Let's go ahead and input this guy. So notice we typed a y1 here because it's got to match wh which one you're talking about. If you're typing in here for the y2, you'd have to put y2. If I wanted to put a prime there, I could, but this is my differential equation, y prime is equal to y minus t squared. All right, so there you go. You're ready to plot this guy. So let's go into the window menu, green button window, and we'll see that we've got some things here. Um, most of the stuff you can really leave the same. I mean, you can adjust the window, you can adjust the, uh, the x and y values of the window. The other thing I'm gonna let you know is in curves. You've got the ability to, to display the slope field right which is just going to be sort of a general lay of the land of what the solution space is going to look like you also have the ability to overlay particular solutions on top of the slope field so if you put a number other than zero here it's going to draw some solutions in there on top of your slope field so for now just leave it alone 
uh, don't do anything with it, just leave it, leave it be. And we'll leave the normal default values of minus 10 to 10, uh, or I should say minus 1 to 10 for x, and, to, and uh, minus 10 to 10 for y, just leave it alone, there's no real reason to, to mess around with it. So let's go and look at the graph, green button graph, and see what we get. Now look what's going on here, we get this really cool looking solution, right? You've got all these little dashed lines everywhere. This is called a slope field of this differential equation. Basically, if you could, uh, remember how every one of these differential equations, if they don't have any initial conditions anyway, there's an infinite set of solutions. That means that literally there's an infinity set of solutions of a, of a com common form that can be plugged into that differential equation and satisfy it. So that's what this is representing. This slope field is representing an infinity of solutions. Now, of course, we're only looking at a small fraction from, you know, you know, we looked at the window a minute ago and you saw the dimensions of x and y. But certainly you can get the idea that if you zoom out from here, you'll see, uh, you know, an infinity of space here with these little dashed lines everywhere. So if you can kind of use your imagination, you can kind of imagine a solution following this line up here and then kind of coming down like this. And then maybe there's another solution a little higher that goes up kind of off the screen and then curves back over and goes down. And then maybe there's another solution over here that kind of goes down like this. So the solutions are going to be individual curves that are overlaid on top of these guys. It's intended to kind of give you a visual representation of all the solutions. I mean, literally you have one like this, then you have one like this, and you have one like this. These are all different curves that satisfy this differential equation, and this is called a slope field. All right. So this is what you're asked to plot a lot of times in your test, and if you get my differential equations tutor, we learn how to construct these slope fields by hand. It gets too hairy to do it for, for differential equations of degree or of order greater than one. That's why the calculator it can only do it for first order equations. Now notice over here on the right, we have an F8 button that says IC, initial condition. So let's go ahead and hit F8. That's going to be second function, and over here, F8. It's asking you initial conditions, question mark. So what you do over here, or what you can do, is you can basically specify a point that this, the real, uh, the real answer goes through. Because remember, that's what an initial condition is. An initial condition says, look, the solution must pass through this point, right? And so that's what we're doing here. There's an infinity of solutions on the screen here, but I'm going to say, okay, the initial condition can go through, uh, t is equal to this, y is equal to this. It must pass through this point. Once I lock this point down, then I eliminate all the other solutions of the infinity of solutions on this screen, and I lock myself into the only one that matters because it goes through my point. So when I'm at the point I want, I hit enter and let the calculator do its work. The dark line here is what the actual solution is that goes through that point. And you can see that it goes and plots in the other direction as well. So here we go, tracing the path all the way back. So this is a solution. In fact, it's the solution that goes through my initial condition. So now I think you can see graphically what the slope field is showing you. It's showing you all of the possible solutions here. Uh, and only when you lock something down with an initial condition does it, does it actually lock it down to the specific solution that describes your specific problem with your specific initial conditions. And then you do that. Then you can go and pick another one of these guys. Second function over here, F3. You can go pick a different spot and find a different solution. And if you were tired of that, you can actually type something in. Let's type in 5.5. We hit enter. It's going to let us pick a value for, for Y. We'll do 6.1. So I can enter exact initial conditions and hit enter. And then it'll go and take its time plotting downward. It still says busy, so give it some time. In just a second, it'll go ahead and pick it up and go the other direction. Let's go off the screen now, it's thinking, and then we might see it come back down here, and there we do. All right, and you can go and do another one just for giggles. We can go and do F8. We can do something at, uh, let's do zero. When T is zero, Y is equal to zero. So let's make it go through the origin here. We hit enter, so here we go. And if now this one's gonna go down below, it's still busy thinking about it, and in just a minute it'll continue off on the left-hand side. So it puts the circles at the points that we actually specify, um, but uh, it's just trying to give you an indication that the solution passes through this particular point. So to be quite honest with you, this is all I use this function for. I plot the slope field, uh, and then I come in here and I stick an initial condition in here and then hit enter and then I can draw a solution overlaid on top of that. That's really mostly what it's for. 
And if you hit regraph F4, then your slope field will be graphed without those overlays right there. Now let me show you one more thing. Uh, we can go back into the Y equals menu. If you know ahead of time an initial condition of your particular solution, then what you use these little fields for here is to input that information. And I kind of skipped over that initially because I thought it made a little more sense. So we're going to keep our slope field. And if let's say that we know at time zero the value of our function is four. So we type that in here. So the t naught is the value and time of our initial condition, the independent variable, and the dependent variable, which is the function value y y sub one. The i means initial is a, is a function at, uh, is a value of four. So this means that when time is zero, the function value is equal to four. So let's go back and look at our graph. So it's going to graph the slope field, and notice it puts a dot at zero comma four because at time zero. Uh, this is the time axis here. At time zero, the value is four. It plots this guy here. Give it some time. It's going to go off the screen and come down the other way. And then it's going to come and uh, go this way. In fact, I guess in this case, it didn't come down. It just kind of went off the screen. So that's what the solution looks like. So that's, that's what that's for. Um, I don't find it particularly useful because, like I said before, you can go specify the initial condition directly on the plot. But if you're in the Y equals menu and you know you just want to plot one solution, then go and type your guy in here. Uh, what if it doesn't, it, the initial condition is not specified at zero? What if it's specified at two? So we can hit uh, two here, like this. 2, enter. So at uh, t is equal to 2, t naught is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. We can go back and take a look at our graph. And then we'll see right here that now it's in a different location. The point that our function goes through is um, t is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. So we, it plots this half. Give it another second. It'll come over to the left-hand side and draw this half coming back over to the left-hand side. So basically those blanks there... Uh, in the Y equals menu, these guys are on the top and on the bottom gives you the ability to specify an initial condition for the particular solution. So if you put something there, it will draw a, a, dark, uh, a dark line on your particular solution in the slope field. But to be honest with you, I like to just leave it in the default state. So I'll go ahead and put a uh, zero here. And then I'll come down to the four. And you can't really put a zero there. If you put a zero, then it'll think zero comma zero is a point. So just hit the clear button to clear it out. And then when you go back to the graph menu, you're presented with your slope field by itself with nothing else. And a lot of times, just looking at the slope field is super, super useful information. If you decide you want to specify an initial condition, just hit the second function F8 up here and tell it what the, what the thing is. Maybe your initial condition's right here. If so, just hit Enter. At that point, it'll draw the solution. And you can specify as many initial conditions for as many curves as you'd like and clutter the screen up to your heart's content. Uh, that's basically what it's for. So that is how to graph slope fields, how to graph differential equations in the TI-89. can only graph first order equations, um, but you know that's fine. I mean, that most calculators a few years ago couldn't even do this. So this is pretty amazing when you, if you ask me. You can type a differential equation in. It'll calculate the slope field, give you a great in indication or idea of what these family of curves will look like. When you lock it down with an initial condition, that'll specify that point, and then you've chosen at that moment that particular curve that goes through that point, and that's the particular solution that you have. So definitely pull it out and play with it. Uh, understand how it works and uh, just go from there. Get some book, uh, some problems out of your book. Play around with it, and uh, you know you can really have a lot of fun with this stuff. And it's actually quite quick. I mean, it, it took a little bit of time for this, but it, not a super enormous amount of time, especially for what it's doing. I mean, you're plotting a differential equation. So I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. That concludes this lesson, and that concludes this entire course. Uh, the TI-89 calculator is an amazing machine. I mean, you can use it from everything from basic graphing, basic algebra, all through trigonometry and geometry and calculus and even advanced differential equations like this, uh, matrix algebra, probability. I mean, for $100, $150 or whatever it costs, it's really an amazing machine. And But the trick with it, just like anything else, is that you have to know how to use it. If you're intimidated by it, if you've never used it before, then uh, you're just not going to be able to utilize it. So I hope that this video series has given you some encouragement, given you some practice. I hope that you've had your calculator out playing around with it while we uh, do these exercises, and I hope that you've learned how to use it in a manner that's a little bit quicker and easier than reading a book. Uh, but having said that, I realize that I have not covered everything. The calculator has lots of other functions in here, 
that I just felt weren't as important to cover. But I believe that if you've gotten this far, if you've done everything that I've shown you how to do, then you're comfortable enough with this calculator where if you discover a new function or a new menu, you'll be able to play around with it uh, and figure out how to use it or go off to the book and figure out that specific function. But I certainly do believe that I have covered the core topics in the calculator, uh, the things that I feel are the most important things for people to understand to get the most out of the machine. So make sure you know how to do those guys. Good luck on your exams. Good luck on your homework. Understand your calculator. It can help you do well in all of your exams, your homework, your standardized tests, and even after you graduate and you go off into the field, it can help you there too.